Chicago, a place of iconic architecture, deep dish pizza, and the highest crime rate in the country. I wonder why. You know, despite all the uh, gun and knife laws, the criminals just don't seem to be abiding by them. So how do you stay safe in the lion's den? What's up FTFers? You know, normally I would say just stay out of places like that, but in this case, I have to go. My son is graduating from basic in the Navy and guess where the graduation ceremony is? Well, sometimes you gotta improvise, adapt and overcome and that's what this video is all about. And I'm so serious about this. I've done so much research that I actually made an outline for y'all. Part one, legal overviews. So guns are completely out of the question. Unfortunately, Chicago has no reciprocity to any other state in the country, so unless you have an FOID card, you're out of luck. And if you got carrying illegally, that would be a felony. Man, that's a bummer. And the next thing is knives. No automatics. They're already coming to get me. Maybe I should hurry up through the video while this is happening so I can get you the information before they do get me. They also have a two and a half inch folder limit. They were so generous. Now you can carry a three inch blade on your belt open carry, but then you become the target. As far as mace and pepper spray goes, well, there's a 2.5 ounce limit. And by the way, there's lots of restrictions, so you gotta know what those are as well. What about stun guns and tasers? Did I mention an FOID card? 16 hours with the police, of course, and all that stuff. Part two, what tools can I use? Well, here's an Italian made Fox Knives Karambit. It's really important to note that this is not spring assisted. This is a mechanical opening knife. See how well that fits into my hand. Now, for those of you that say that BattleBox carries crap, well, I think that it is off the table now because this is a $530 knife and guess where it came from? And by the way, the people that actually got one of these in their subscription box, they didn't pay that. So maybe you should check into that. Now there's also tactical flashlights and pins. And then there's always improvised tools with whatever you can find. The thing is, these require training. For those of you that aren't trained, defensive hand, air, circulation, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Keyboard commandos that are about to get into the comments section saying this is a spring assisted knife. It is not, it is a loophole. Let me show you how this works. Number one, see this little lever? I have to push it. And if I don't push it hard enough, it's still floppy. It doesn't open unless I put some force into it. Now the number two cheat code, how you can draw and open the blade super fast to see this little feature right here. What it does is it catches on your pants and opens it up for you when you draw it out. Let me see if I can show you this slow. This clip right here, this pocket clip is very strong. And when you pull it out, your fingers automatically go here so that you can go to work with it. Now the finger hole, that's obviously so you can pull it out of your pants, deploy the knife. But sometimes when you're fighting, it'll come out of your hand. You'll lose control of the knife. This is so you can flick back around and now you can go back to work. There's also the flick and pull method. And quite possibly the most important reason to have the finger ring is because remember, if you brandish a weapon, somebody can take it from you and use it on you. This makes it a lot harder for them to take it from you. All right, disclaimer time. Number one, these things are very dangerous. Don't kid yourself. Number two, you can under no circumstances whatsoever tell law enforcement that this is for self-defense. It's really good for cleaning my nails. Oh no, it's for uh, letters and for opening Amazon boxes. Seriously, if something happens, don't say anything, get an attorney. Now would be a good time for you to go follow Doug Marcotta for some tips, tricks, and hacks. On exertion, you can twist and it does a lot more damage. Let the edge do its work. See, go ahead. <laughs> Any questions? Or you're going to be flailing around like a fifth grader trying to fight. No, no, don't do that. Run.
run. Part three, practical strategies. Can't say it enough, situational awareness. Do not be on your phone. Do not look like a tourist. Come on now, keep an eye on everything. The name of the game is to stay on high alert. You've got to think tradecraft strategies, you know, identifying egress, suspicious behavior, finding your safe zones. And let's not forget the gray man principles. Your attire and the ability to blend in are very important. That's neutral, low profile colors and outfits. And that includes your bag. Now we just dropped a video on six steps to becoming the gray man. So you should probably check that out. Now about the best advice that I could actually give you is strategic avoidance. Now something that we use when I was in service are crime maps. You can actually look those up and figure out, you know, places you need to avoid. But in Chicago, it's like a kindergartner colored it in with a crayon. <laughs> but in theory, you could use those crime maps to plan out, you know, your safe uh, routes and uh, escape routes and uh, make it a backup escape route and then another escape route. Have a pace plan. Part four, communication strategies. Obviously, it doesn't matter where you go. You should, yeah. Obviously, it doesn't matter where you go. You should always be sharing your itinerary with somebody that you trust. You can also check out apps like Citizen or Life360 so that you can have real-time tracking. A huge one is digital security. You need to avoid using Wi-Fi and use VPNs whenever you can. You really should have an RFID wallet. I'm actually going to be carrying a Faraday bag in my bag just so that I can protect our phones and our cards. One thing that you need for sure is an action plan for emergencies. And some of the best advice that I can give you is learning how to role play. Real tradecraft. That's verbal de-escalation and escape tactics. The psychology aspect of this in real time is huge. The thing is, I could literally make a video about every single topic that I just covered because, I mean, it's that deep. The thing is, you really need to get training. And we have a ton of information on the channel to help you out with each of those topics. You just got to get into the archives and start scrolling. This is just a primer to get you thinking so that you can prepare to do something like what I'm about to do. Remember, preparation is not paranoia. It's the key to staying alive. Now, if y'all are interested while I'm out there in Chicago, I have prepared a special kit just to go there. This is different from any of the other kits that I've ever shared with you. And I could also do a video on my clothing choices and how I can go to a city like that with one outfit and get by for an entire week. So if y'all wanna see videos like that in the future, let me know in the comment section so I can make it happen. Get in the comment section, share some of those strategies that you have when you go into the lion's den. If you're honey smack digging the video, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And until next time, keep fueling those fires.